Hello and welcome to the session in which we will discuss how to account for materials and supplies in governmental accounting. So governmental accounting is different than regular accounting because it uses a modified accrual. But the way we account for material and supplies is a little bit unique in the sense that we might combine some accrual and some cash methods. So this is what we will discuss in this session. The reason we call it material and supplies because the government don't carry inventory. Some of it might be an actuality inventory, but we don't call it inventory because government don't resell. When they buy the stuff, the goods, they consume it. We call it materials and supplies. And there are two ways or two methods of accounting that are available to account for materials and supplies. One is the consumption method and the other one is the purchase method. And this is what we will discuss in this session. How does the consumption method, first I'm going to explain what is the consumption method, how does it work, what's the purchase method in accounting for materials and supplies when it comes to governmental accounting, governmental accounting. Let's go ahead and get started. Before we proceed any further, I have a public announcement about my company, FarhatLectures.com. Our governmental and not-for-profit accounting course is best for online students and students who are struggling in their courses. We cover modified accrual, fund accounting, budgetary accounting, comprehensive annual financial report, reconciliation of government-wide financial statement, as well as not-for-profit accounting. Our comprehensive course includes lectures, multiple choice, true false. Go ahead, start your free trial today. We are here to help. Your success starts here. Let's explain the difference between the consumption method and the purchase method. Under the consumption method, inventory, and when I say inventory, remember, it's supplies and material, but I want you to think of it as inventory because it's easier for most of us to account for inventory because you learned accrual accounting. They are recorded as an asset when you buy those supplies and material. Then you expense them as they are consumed. That's why it's the consumption method. So inventory is recorded as an asset when purchased and expenditure are debited as the inventory is used consumption. It's closer to the accrual method and this is how we account for, for example, inventory. For example, inventory or supplies. What we do with inventory, initially inventory for a business purpose and hopefully hopefully you know this, when we buy inventory, if we buy $100 worth of inventory, it's inventory. Then what we do when we sell this inventory, we reduce the inventory and we increase cost of goods sold. This is when we expense it. Same concept. Under the purchase method, the inventory of supplies account is updated at year end. So what do we do when we make the purchase? When we make the purchase, we record it as an expenditure. Cash basis, we paid for something, it's cash. At the end of the year, if we need to make an adjustment, we will make the adjustment. So if we consume the whole thing, if this is what we purchased, we purchased those pen, pencils and, and a scissor. And let's assume we consumed, we purchased them for $50. Under the purchase method, we expense them, specifically expenditure. We treat them as an expenditure immediately. Debit expenditure, credit cash under the purchase method. At the end of the year, if those are gone, good, we're done. There's nothing we can do. That's it, we expense them. If anything left, then we have to put back the supply, the inventory supplies. We have to go back and reinstate whatever supplies we have left. Under the consumption method, if we purchase 50,000 worth of supplies, first it's called supplies inventory, $50, and let's assume we paid cash 50. Then at the end of the year, we adjust the inventory account to bring it up to date. The best way is to look at an example. So we're going to look at this city in 20x4. The city ordered half a million worth of supplies. The supplies received were 350, and we paid 230,000. Of the 350, we used 300 of, of the supplies, or the remaining balance in supplies is 50. So first, I'm going to show you the common entries, whether you are using the consumption method or the purchase method. Those entries will not differ. Like what? When we placed an order 
in governmental accounting. What do we do? We debit encumbrances, which is a holding account, and reserve for encumbrances for the half a million. Regardless whether using the consumption method or the purchase method, this is always the case, and we learn about this. Then, once we receive the supplies, what do we do? We received 350. We did not receive the whole thing. We reversed. We reverse 350 of the half a million because we did not receive the full amount. Now, what happened to the reserve for encumbrances? We learn about this in another session and encumbrances. That's a separate story. Then we paid 230,000 for those supplies, debit accounts, payable, credit cash, because we paid 230. Those are the entries that we make regardless of which method we are using. Now we'll be, we'll be looking first at the consumption method, how to account for these transactions under the consumption method. If you want to copy the numbers down, because I'm going to show you the journal entries on the next slide. So I'm going to show you the journal entries under the consumption method. First, we debit an asset called supplies inventory for 350 and we credit accounts payable. Then at the end of the year, remember at the end of the year, we have 50,000 remaining, or I told you three, 300,000 was consumed. What we are going to do, so initially, so follow with the T account with me here. So I'm keeping track of supplies inventory 350, which is an asset. At the end of the year, I reduced it by 300,000 and I'm left with 50,000 in inventory. Let's put the inventory here. Yeah, that's, I'm left with 50,000 of inventory. So I credited supplies inventory and I debited the expenditure 300,000. Okay. Now, at the end of the year, what am I going to do? At the end of the year, let me change this. So this way it's, it's easier for you to see. I will credit expenditure because remember we close expenditure and the expenditure goes with we credit expenditure and we double the fund balance to reduce the equity account because expenditure or expenses is close to equity because remember the fund balance is the equity. So this is what happened. Am I done yet? I'm not done yet. Why? Because what's happening is this. I have 50,000 of inventory. I have 50,000 of inventory. But that 50,000 of inventory, it's sitting in the fund balance now. It's, it's an asset because when I purchase an asset, when I purchase them, kind of basically I have a fund balance of 50,000. But that fund balance is now unassigned. So I need to remove it from unassigned to assigned to remove the 50,000 to the non-spendable, not assigned, I don't mean not assigned, to the non-spendable. Because this 50,000 of inventory is a non-spendable amount. It's part, so the 50,000 of asset and supplies, it should not be part of the fund balance. It should be part of the fund balance non-spendable. When I say fund balance, fund balance unassigned. So what do we have to do? We have to debit. So notice what's going to happen here. I'm going to debit the, let me do a different color. Go back here. Use a different color. Orange. I'm going to debit the fund balance unassigned 50 and credit the fund balance 50. So on the balance sheet, the equivalent of a balance sheet, now my equity is uh, 50. I have equity of 50,000 non-spendable, which represent the inventory. Inventory is an non-spendable asset. Therefore, it should be shown, you know, 50,000 of asset. There's 50,000 of equity, but that's non-spendable. So all in all, expenditure was 300,000 on the income statement. Then the expenditure account went down to zero. The fund balance is reduced. This is not the balance, but the fund balance is reduced by 350. That's not the balance because, you know, we're going to have, I'm, I'm only keeping track of the, debit si of the debit side, not the credit side. On the income statement or the equivalent of it, statement of activities, we have 300,000 of expenditure. This is under the consumption method. And we still have inventory of 50,000. Under the purchase method, what I will do is as soon as I buy the asset, I will debit expenditure. And if I paid cash, I credit cash. If I bought them on account, I credit accounts payable. The point is I expensed the, I expensed the purchased immediately. I expensed 350 because once I purchased it, I'm going to be paying for it in the near future, the next 30 days, it's expenditure. So notice, what happened here is on the ink on the statement of activities, I recorded expenditure of 350. Okay, notice here, I recorded expenditure of 300,000. So that's the first difference. What do I need to do at the end of the year? At the end of the year, 
what I do is I have to make an adjustment. What I find out is I still have 50,000 worth of inventory. So what do I need to do? I need to debit my inventory, my supplies inventory. This is supplies inventory. I need to debit my supplies inventory 50. Therefore, I have a $50,000 balance. And I need to place in my non-spendable equity account 50,000. Okay, so this is the adjustment one and one. Okay, this is the adjustment. So the adjustment and the adjustment, I placed 50,000 of inventory, which I have 50,000 of inventory, which is I have 50,000 of inventory under the consumption method. I have 50,000 of inventory under the purchase method because I do have 50,000 and 50,000 of fund balance non-spendable, 50,000 of fund balance non-spendable. Hold on a second. So what's the difference? Not really at the end of the day, but let me show you the difference. On the statement of activities under the consumption method, I reported 300,000. Under the purchase method, I reported 350. There are more expenditure on the income statement. True. But what's going to happen to that expenditure at the end of the day? At the end of the day, I'm going to have to close it. I'm going to have to credit expenditure and debit fund balance 350. Update my account. So I'm going to reduce my expenditure and reduce my close my expenditure and reduce my equity because the expenditure will have to be zero. So what happened to my fund balance? My fund balance went down over all 350. My fund balance went down over all 350. I'm back to the same place when it comes to the equity section, in quote, equity section of the balance sheet. So under the statement of net position, I reduce my fund balance by 350, aka, you want to call it balance sheet if it's easier for you, statement of net position. Now, the net effect is the same. Why? Because everything is close eventually to the fund balances. And in the fund balance, not everything, the amount that's supposed to be expense is expense to the fund balance, close to the fund balance, total of 350 reduced the fund balance, and we have 50 and non-spendable. Basically, I would say, when we look at the statement of net position, which is what we care about, we are all in the same position. Let's take a look at this example and uh, using the consumption method. What adjusting entries, closing entries do we have to make? We have 20,000 of beginning inventory for this example. Purchases were 150. So what do we do under purchases for the consumption method? Under the consumption method, we debit supplies inventory 150 assuming we paid cash we credit cash 150 because this is what we paid so we started with 20 we purchased 150 we had 170 ending inventory was 15 we consumed 155 so what do we have to do we have to expense 155 so what we do is we debit supplies expenditure 155 and credit supplies inventory 155 now how much left in ending inventory What's left in ending inventory is is 15,000 because 170, then we reduce supplies inventory. Remember, we have 170, we reduce supplies inventory. So as far as the inventory account, we had, we started with 20, added 150, then the adjustment credited this account 155. What I'm left with is 15. I'm supposed to have 15. All is good. Am I done yet? Not yet. Remember, I have to adjust my the fund balance that's non-spendable because in the prior year, the fund balance not spendable was 20,000. How do I know this? Because at the end of the year, I had to tag this beginning inventory 20,000 in the fund balance non-spendable. Now, this balance is not 20, this balance is 15. So what do I have to do? I have to debit my fund balance non-spendable. I have to reduce it and increase my fund balance unassigned. So my fund balance non-spendable went down because the prior year, that balance was 20. How do I know it's 20? Because my beginning inventory is 20. Now I have to reduce that, uh, reduce, reduce my fund balance. Sorry, I have to reduce my fund balance non-spendable by 5,000 and increase my fund balance unassigned by 5,000. So this is what I would do to adjust my fund balance non-spendable to show only 15,000 of assets of inventory that's non-spendable in my fund balance on the statement of net position. Let's take a look at this example using the purchase method. What do we have to do? Remember under the purchase method, when I purchase those 150, what did I do with them? I 
treated them as an expenditure. I treated them as an expenditure. I treated them as an expenditure right from the beginning. So as soon as I purchased them, I debit expenditure. I don't want you to think I'm writing expense 150 and I credited whatever if I paid cash I credit cash 150 or I credit accounts payable so this 150 is I expensed it because I'm using the purchase method and the prior 20,000 that I had earlier it was expensed in the prior year as well when I when it was purchased it was put back as inventory and the fund balance is adjusted but what else do, do I have to do now well I have to adjust my non-spendable balance what do i have to do i have to reduce non-spendable balance and the fund balance by 5000 because my fund balance non-spendable was was how much was was 20 based on my inventory and my now my inventory is 15 i have to reduce my inventory from 15 to 20 i credit my supplies inventory to 15 i had 20 now i reduced it by 5 i have 15 so this is the adjusting that we have to do under the purchase method. Now, the expenditure account is not affected by the adjusting entries under the purchase method because all the purchases that we made was already expend, ex, expensed or treated as an expenditure right from the get-go. What I have to do is adjust my, and I don't have anything left because it's all gone. I, 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 I consumed all of it. So I have to adjust my fund balance non-spendable and adjust my supplies account by 5,000. What should you do now? You want to go to Farhat Lectures, look at additional resources, multiple choice questions, AI CPA questions, questions that's going to help you prepare for your CPA exam. Invest in yourself. The CPA exam is worth it. Your governmental accounting course, course is worth it. And stay safe.